Hey, how's it going guys? Jack and Maddie with the Toasty Bros. And today we're gonna to be showing you the best productivity laptop. And it doesn't totally break the bank. Yes, it's an expensive laptop, but given what you're getting for the money, you cannot complain. But before we get into that, let's hear a word from today's sponsor. Today's video is brought to you by Deepcool, more specifically the AS500 air cooler and McCube 110. The AS500 is a single tower CPU cooler that boasts a five heat pipe design and a TF140S PWM fan for awesome performance with a slim profile. It also comes packed with RGB and enough cooling performance to handle even the most power hungry CPUs on the market while not totally breaking the bank. They also have the McCube 110, which is an awesome minimalist case designed for micro ITX and mini ITX motherboards. It also has a magnetic tempered glass side panel and a built in GPU holder to correct GPU sag. All this while coming in at a great price point. If you're interested in these products, please check the link in the description down below to learn more. And special thanks again to Deepcool for sponsoring today's video. So I decided to buy this laptop a couple weeks ago, so I've had some time to actually try it out, which normally you don't see a Toasty Bros review where we actually try it out first, we do it during the video. So I've actually gotten to know this laptop, I found the things that I like about it, things that I dislike, and we'll talk about those in a minute. But first, I'm just gonna talk about what the laptop is and what all comes in the box. So the actual laptop we have here is the Asus ZenBook Duo. And like I said, this is already fully unboxed. I've been using it for about a week. Now we actually got this off of Amazon. This was an Amazon refurb. So normally these are $1449.99, so close to $1,500. But this one here, I paid about 1100 bucks for. And honestly, I wouldn't have known that it was refurbed at all. It just felt like a brand new laptop. Now what's really cool about this, and you guys saw a video we recently did, is it has dual screens. I'm gonna go ahead and get logged in for you guys. So aside from the dual screen laptop, you also get an Asus carrying case or bag or whatever you wanna call it. It doesn't really have like any straps or anything, but it's a pretty nice leather handbag. I end up opting for a backpack, which I'll talk about in a minute, but um, yeah, it's a pretty nice carrying bag. It also comes with a stylus and that is included in the total price that you pay. And of course it also came with the charger and that's basically it. You get the stylus, you get the case, you get the laptop and you get a charger and you do get an Asus warranty and everything. And it does come with a little bit of bloatware, but the only thing it came with that I can think of is McAfee. And I just went ahead and uninstalled that as you should. So uh, pretty good on their side for not having a ton of bloatware, but to talk about the laptop now, now the performance that this thing is packing is actually not bad. It comes with an Intel i7-10510U. So that is a four core, eight threaded processor that boosts up to almost five gigahertz. It comes with 16 gigs of RAM that is running a dual channel, which is really nice to have. It comes with a one terabyte NVMe SSD. It does come with, of course, the Intel integrated graphics, which I believe are the uh, 630. It also comes with an NVIDIA GeForce MX250. Now, if you wanna opt for the $1,000 model, I believe it only comes with eight gigs. It does not come with the discrete NVIDIA uh, MX250 graphics. And it also, I think, comes with a 512 gig NVMe SSD. Honestly, for the price difference, especially since I got this one on refurb for only $100 more, it made total sense for me to do this one. But overall though, this thing's pretty cool because I can actually still game, it's not the greatest. And we will do some gaming benchmarks because what would be a Toaster Res video is without some gaming benchmarks. But let's just talk about the actual outside of the laptop, um, what all you actually get built into it. So I'm already using one of the USBs for a mouse, which I'll show you guys in a second. But we have uh, USB 3, we have USB type C, we have an HDMI out port, we have the actual charger port. And then on the other side, we have a micro SD reader, we have a combo headphone jack, and then one more USB. So, you know, a little bit lacking in the USB department. We basically have a total of three, and one of them is a USB type C. Um, and other than that, there's really not anything else to my knowledge as far as plugins go on this. Now the dual screen functionality, is really awesome. But one thing you can probably tell by the camera is it's very dim. There is a brightness control on it and it's not all the way up, so that helps. But it's pretty dim in the viewing angle. I'm gonna be honest, it's not the greatest. Um, I don't know if the camera does it justice, but it this screen right here is very bright, very easy to see, very nice screen, better than any laptop I've had. It's just that secondary screen, you have to have it at the right angle to be able to see everything well. But when you do it at the right angle and you're in the right type of lighting, the second screen comes in absolutely clutch when it comes to doing multitasking. And also, their built-in um, Asus uh, feature, which I forget what it's called, we'll have it in the screen um, or in the description, but basically, it's a whole nother screen essentially. So you can actually pull up different um, applications and tasks that actually go over your secondary screen. So in a sense, it acts as a third monitor, which is pretty useful um, for everyday tasks. And like I showed you guys, the little handwriting one is uh, actually pretty cool 
And then my only other complaint so far about this keyboard has been the keyboard is hard to get used to. You have your touchpad on the right hand side, so keep that in mind if you're a lefty, this is gonna be a little bit awkward for you. But the actual keyboard layout is very, you know, normal. It's not super crazy. However, the shift and enter key are a little bit awkward, like the page up, page down is a little bit weird. I'm used to having a numpad on the laptop, which I normally don't use. I actually like the compact design. It's just that shift key. I, I'm always pressing the page up because I imagine the shift as being the size of the enter key. And look, there is a full size one over here. Didn't even realize that. I just never used the uh, left hand shift. So keyboard's taken me some getting used to, but it does have brightness control on the actual backlit keyboard, so you can have it off, you can turn it up a little bit. It does auto turn off after a certain amount of time. You can change that in the settings. So it's also pretty nice at, at night or if there is a, a lack of light, you can see the keyboard really well. Now to show you guys the webcam, it's, it's not the best. They actually did kind of brag about the webcam slightly and uh, I, I, you know, it's not terrible. With the right lighting, it's not that bad actually. I tried it out in my living room where the lighting was bad and it was laggy, but it's not terrible. It's not super delayed. I think it's a 720p webcam, um, so it's not 1080 or anything, but hey, for Skype, Zoom meetings, um, other stuff like that, it's not too bad. You could even do like some light streaming if you're not gaming, just doing like some just chatting. Uh, wouldn't be too bad for that. Now, one thing I do want to show you guys, one of the points that I loved is the audio on this is absolutely amazing. Um, and also the fan on it is very quiet. There's, I don't know if you can tell because we have a monster running in the background, but the fan is not even on right now. Um, so when you're not gaming, it's actually a very quiet laptop. Is it kind of impressive? Nice, my bad. Yeah, I was very impressed by the audio because I'm used to having bigger laptops and they do not have the type of, uh, you know, small amount of bass this thing has and just the dynamic range. So um, honestly, I think we've gone over the main aspects of the laptop. I do wanna show you guys a couple of the accessories that I got to go with it. And then I'm gonna have Matt do some epic gaming and be a Fortnite, actually we don't have Fortnite. Oh! I'm gonna have Matt be an epic gamer and play some Minecraft Bed Wars, some Call of Duty, Whoa. some Skyrim, and maybe try Ages of the Empire. Whoa! So the two accessories that I do recommend having for pretty much any portable laptop is one, you should get a wireless mouse. You don't need one as fancy as this, but hey, shout out to Corsair. I actually really uh, love this mouse. This one here is the Corsair Iron Claw RGB wireless, but honestly, any wireless mouse is gonna work perfectly fine for you, but this one's really cool because it has Rigibiv. No, but it actually does have some really cool RGB to it. Really good DPI, there's like no latency to it. It does use Bluetooth or the USB dongle that we have inserted. And then lastly, the other thing I recommend having is a carrying case. So I decided to go big um, and go pretty expensive with a Samsonite backpack just because I wanted a really nice, uh, slim, kind of modern um, and well-cushioned backpack. So the actual laptop goes in here and then there's plenty of expansion and storage. But hey, you know what? You could just run with the case that's included. Um, like I said, I wanted something that I could carry this laptop around all the time with me um, and just be one of those cool guys who does important business things. We actually did a full unboxing review of this backpack, if you're into those, um, on Toasty DIY. So if you want to check that out, uh, just go to our recommended channels and whatnot and Toasty DIY is our side channel. Gaming time? Gaming time. It's gaming time. All right, guys. So, so yeah, we're going to get this thing plugged up and then we're going to see how it performs in some games. Test those MX250 graphics. Guys, we are in good old Minecraft. Now, we don't have MSI Aftermath set up on the machine. What we're going to do is just go ahead and open up a world here, which I assume is what Jackson started. Hopefully, he wasn't really grinding in this world. I was really, no, I'm just kidding. I think uh, it was at F5. You can pull yeah, up that FPS be F. And up, oh, that looks a lot better. Ooh, look at that. Okay. 130 FPS yes. max settings. So, yeah, we look like real gamers right now. I'm going to get out of this. Oh. One more time. There we go. This looks a little more playable. So yeah, Minecraft. I mean, of course, it's a laptop like this. You should be able to play Minecraft, but the MX250 from Jackson's Reach is basically like a GT 1030-ish card. So um, if you're looking for something on the go, I mean, it's fine. It does the job. You can play some games like Minecraft without any problems. Um, and then you'll see in the testing, when we do get to some higher end games, that's where it starts to hurt a little bit. But again, this is mainly like a work laptop. You're not really going to get this as your main gaming machine. You could spend about the same money on an actual big bulky gaming laptop but trying to get the dual screens the cool productivity effects of it so it's just kind of the compromise you have to make but yeah here we go running around again fps is still really good you got that ball in minecraft music in the background but uh yeah let's play minecraft let's, let's make this thing stretch its legs a little bit and try another game 
All right, so we're gonna do high settings in Skyrim. We're gonna launch into this. Skyrim is an older game, of course, but again, it might be a game you wanna play on the go. I definitely remember when I was playing Skyrim back in the day on my older laptop. I mean, you can definitely play it on lower settings, and this is kind of a game that you would love to take with you and be able to play when you're just like hanging out in between classes or something like that. So uh, we're gonna dive into this continued game, and obviously he's been grinding. Level, level one. one. Level one. Halfway Whoa. through. We're looking at like 50, 55, a little bit below that FPS. It's not too bad for a 60 hertz screen. This isn't an awful experience. Um, it is on high settings too. You can lower things to medium and get a little bit better results. And when you get into the open world, it might be a little bit different because we are kind of just like hanging out in the depths right now. Um, we're just gonna keep on going. I haven't, I haven't played this in forever. Yeah, the FPS kind of with a lot of visual effects seems to go down a little bit here and there. Uh, but again, high settings could lower it and definitely get more results, uh, better results that is. More, more results. gooder results. More gooder results. I like that. Um, looking at the task manager, it does look like the MX250 is at like 100%. So it's definitely not like a bottleneck situation. Um, the graphics is just is doing the best it can. So, I mean, it's not, the performance is still pretty damn good. And you got to keep in mind, the MX250 is basically like a GT1030 or an AMD standard. It's about an RX 550 slash 560 level. Um, so, you know, like, your yeah, stamina is low. Uh-oh. Uh -oh. So like we said, I mean, it's, it's pretty decent for uh, the dual screen functionality and some light gaming, but you know, don't buy this expecting uh, to stream or do any major gaming. Come so at bad. me, looks bro. looks like in uh, action, we're uh, holding between 39 and 45 FPS, which isn't too bad. So on the one bright side here, it's not like you're, you don't dip frames really bad or anything. Oh, look at the finisher. Ooh, he done. Yeah, Skyrim is definitely playable. Let's have to kill those spiders. I mean, you know what? That's what you expect in Skyrim. But uh, yeah, let's try, um, I don't know. Let's try Cold War and make this thing cry a little bit. Okay, guys, we are in Cold War right now. And we're actually running, I'll go ahead and look at the settings real quick so y'all can see. We are running at 1360 by 768, which is definitely lower res than the actual 1080p monitor. But I mean, we are getting close to 60 FPS most of the time. And it does, it does not look that bad. Yes, all those settings too. It does not look awful on this screen. Norm normally when you do drop the uh, resolution on a monitor a lot to non-native, it doesn't look great, but this makes this game definitely way more playable um, while not really ugh, hurting that much in terms of uh, looking that bad, so. Which one thing I will say is uh, last night before we did this video, I tested this game out at uh, 1080p, but I lowered the render resolution scale, which basically just, it basically keeps the resolution um, native to 1080, but it, it lowers it um, by lowering the graphics an intense amount. Um, and the game was barely playable at 1080p, even at like 60% render scale, and it looked really bad. Um, so this actually is a pretty big step up just run running this lower resolution natively. So yeah, it's definitely way more playable than being stuck at like 30, 40 FPS and then having to run at really low res scale. So I'm stuck reloading. All right, yeah. So I mean, this is definitely more than playable. Um, I mean, it is running at a lower resolution, but I mean, for the sake of this benchmark run, hey, it's not too bad. I do have some questions on what graphics card it's actually using because I'm looking down at Task Manager and it looks like it's using the i7 mainly, not the MX250. So the graphics could be a lot better if we could actually go into it and program it differently but um, it could just be the fact they're running on all those settings and the GPU is just not being able to be used as much. So, uh, but hey, it is playable. And the fact that again, this is a productivity laptop and it can do some gaming on the side. I mean, you really cannot complain too much. So how about we go ahead and just uh, wrap this video up real quick. Okay, so as you guys could tell, I'm pretty excited about this laptop. I'm actually coming from an HP Omen that had an i7 and a 1050 Ti. So I actually opted to basically have less graphics performance because I realized I don't game on a laptop that often. If I'm being honest, gaming on a laptop's not super enjoyable anyways, especially doing anything competitive wise. So I just wanted something that could still play like an RTS game on the side or Minecraft or something along those lines if we're on a business vacation. But other than that, I really wanted something that had the dual screens just for the productivity value of it. So overall, very happy with this laptop. If you're interested in picking this laptop up, links in the description down below. They are affiliate links and you purchase the links. They do help us out. If you guys have any other laptops you want us to check out, because right now with the PC market the way that it is, going with a laptop is actually probably one of the better values right now. We'd be happy to take a look at some of them. So comment down below if you have any that you want us to take a look at and we'll consider it. So if you guys haven't already, don't forget to check out our other two YouTube channels and also our twitch.tv slash toastybros. And do not forget to like, comment, and subscribe. And we'll see you guys in the next one. Goodbye.
So if you guys want more of the Toasty Bros, these videos just might not be enough for you. Check out our float plane. We do a lot of random stuff over there. Sometimes McAllister comes in, asks us some crazy questions, and then we answer them, and then we give you some behind the scenes stuff of how we make these videos happen. So check the link in the description down below. Float plane, subscribe. Yeah, that's it. Goodbye.